Welcome to today's collective worship and today we're thinking about the I am's of Jesus. Now before we get started I've got a quick question for you. If you were going to make the ultimate sandwich what would be in it? What would be the fillings that you'd put inside the two slices of bread? Would it be chicken and mayonnaise and sweet corn and bacon? Or would it be ham and tomato and cheese? Or would it be ice cream and chocolate sauce? Have a little think about your most amazing ultimate sandwich and what you'd put in it. Now there are so many fillings we can think of, aren't there, that we can put inside a sandwich. But the funny thing is that as soon as you put a slice of bread on the top and a slice of bread on the bottom, it becomes a sandwich no matter what you're filling. You see, the bread is essential, isn't it, to make it a sandwich. Well, we're going to think today about bread. And Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Well, that's a bit of a strange thing to say, isn't it? But listen out in our story now, taken from the Old Testament, and listen out for food as well. Now the people of Israel, God's people, had been set free from Egypt, and they'd entered into the land. But it was a desert land, a wilderness with nothing growing. And as they sat there, and as Moses and his brother Aaron led the people, why, the people began to grumble and they began to moan. Their tummies had grown empty and was growling around. <laughs> we should have stayed in Egypt, they said. At least there we sat around pots of food, they complained. Well, what a thing to say. To say that they'd rather be slaves in Egypt than free people just because their tummies were rumbling. Well, God had heard their complaints and God had heard their cry. And so God spoke to Moses. Tell the people that I will feed them. I have heard what they've been saying. They are to trust in me. Moses went to the people and told them everything that God had said, how he would provide meat in the evening and food in the morning. And they're to gather just as much as they need and not to keep any extra. Well, that night, as dusk began to fall, a whole swarm of quails, little birds, came and rested in the desert place. And so the people had meat to eat. But in the morning, when they came out of their tents, they looked around and saw what looked like dew on the ground. But this frost-like dew wasn't dew at all. In fact, there were flakes. They asked themselves, what is it? And so Moses told them, this is the very food that God promised he would provide. Gather up as much as you need. Bake it, boil it, cook it and eat it. For this is God's bread, his food that he has brought for you. And so the people did. They took out jars and pots and they filled up just as much as they needed. But some of them decided that they were going to take twice as much as they needed, enough for the next day too. But that was not what God asked them to do. He told them to trust in him. So the next morning, when they got up, they went out of their tents and found the manna, the bread from heaven on the ground, exactly like it had been the day before. But those who'd taken twice as much, those who tried to keep some back for themselves, have found that their manna was all stinking and rotten and full of maggots. Oh, there's no way they could eat that. And so they threw that away and gathered more food. Each evening the birds came and each morning God provided manna, his bread for them each to eat, until it came to the sixth day. And God reminded Moses to tell the people to take twice as much. For the following day was a day of rest, a Sabbath day when they aren't to work and they aren't to gather in food. And so the people went out and gathered in twice as much as they needed. But the very next day, instead of it stinking and being rotten and full of maggots, why it was good to eat. They could eat the manna that God had given them even though it had been kept one more day. And that was because it was a special day of Sabbath. 
and each and every day for 40 years, God provided food for his people until they eventually entered into the promised land. So I wondered if you heard there how God provided food for his people each and every day. He provided bread from heaven, his manna, and it says in the Bible it tastes like wafers, which are honey tasting. Well, that sounds delicious to me. God provided his food for his people every single day. And for Christians, this story reminds them that God provides for each and every one of us, that he is the bread of heaven. Not like food that we might get from the supermarket and put in our packed lunches, but the kind of food where we know that God gives us life. He sustains us. He keeps us going. He provides for us each and every day exactly what we need. That is how incredible God is. And so for Christians, they can trust that God will be there for them each day. Now we're going to finish now with a prayer. And I'm going to say amen at the end. And you can say amen too. It just means I agree. If not, that's absolutely fine. So it's got our hands ready like we're receiving a gift. Lord Jesus, thank you for the incredible story of the manna from heaven. Thank you that you call yourself the bread of life because you provide for us each and every day and you sustain us and keep us going. May we learn to trust in you each day for all our needs. Amen.